Welcome to this edition of uh, Chat with Chair. Uh, we have uh, with us uh, today uh, Mr. Jagdish Mitra, who is the co-chair of the FIKI Science and Technology Committee. He is also the Chief Strategy Officer and Head of Growth of Tech Mahindra. He leads uh, the Global Agenda for Business Growth at Tech Mahindra. Um, and he is on the Executive Council of NASCOM, where he is driving conversations of the future and future workforce and reskilling, and actively working towards broader collaboration to take uh, the Indian uh, IT uh, business process uh, sector uh, and leading the growth of that. Uh, it's estimated that this year the ID sector would do close to $194 billion. Uh, so it's a growth of 2% over last year. Um, in his 25 years of career, he has played many roles uh, spanning sales, business uh, development, and large deals. He has opened new markets for Tech Mahindra uh, in North America, UK, Middle East, Australia, New Zealand, and Southeast Asia, practically around the globe. Uh, he regularly mentors startups in the B2B tech space uh, like SKT and Silicon Valley. He's an extremely great speaker. You will see that uh, in the conversation ahead. Uh, he's sought after in the leadership circle in India and internationally. He also is the founder of Jishnu Foundation, which provides a growth platform to underprivileged children through sports. Uh, so thank you, uh, Jagdish, for uh, joining us uh, today on this uh, chat uh, for chair. Thank you, Dilip. Thank you. Uh, you know, we are going to discuss uh, science and technology uh, today. And uh, from your perspective, uh, you know, everybody believes that science and technology is important, especially for a country like India. We have, you know, ample potential to emerge as a technology enabled economic power, uh, superpower, actually. Uh, and yet, uh, there are two views to it. People say that more needs to be done by government government believes that more needs to be done by industry. Uh, industry says that timely support needs to be extended to such uh, technologies at every stage of growth. And as a percentage of uh, GDP, public expenditure on R&D has been stagnant between 0.6 to 0.7% over the past two decades. So what, in your view, is the current state of science and technology and innovation in, in the country? And what are some of the challenges? Thank you. First of all, thank you, Dilip. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to chat with you and with in this uh, absolutely prestigious uh, forum um, and, and uh, for adding pressure on me by saying that I am a great speaker, which I think soon the um, audience will find out was uh, not exactly very true. Um, but, you know, coming back to the question, uh, science, technology, and innovation, I think, couldn't have been more important than what it is now and probably what it will be in the future. Um, especially, we've seen, we've seen right in front of us what uh, technology and science and innovation have done both ways. I mean, for whatever reason, the pandemic happened, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, it spread across the world and it created havoc across the whole world and never before in our lifetimes uh, we've seen and i hope we don't see it again but you know these things will probably just from a health and safety perspective these things will probably happen a little more frequently because of the different things we tend to do with environment and the different things we are trying to do with uh, uh, technology and could be even warfare this is only a you know a, a taste of things that might come in that whole journey of ours, uh, we have an opportunity to address these problems only through science, technology, and innovation. Right here in the middle of what happened, in about 14 to 18 months since the pandemic happened, we are talking about vaccination, which has never before have ever happened. And that can only happen if this, is, this was enabled by science, technology, and innovation. And, and we've seen the benefit of it. We've seen the benefits of people coming back to work, coming back to commerce, coming back to livelihood, only because of the speed. Things that took 10 years are now happening in 14 to 18 months in order for um, the realization to happen. Coming back to your question, therefore, is that what can we do to make sure that India and the opportunity that India has 
in order to drive the agenda of science, technology, and innovation, and also towards the growth of the GDP, and therefore enable that. Look at the elements that make science, technology, and innovation happen. I think one of the key things we talk about is education and focus on academia. And that I think is tremendous in India. We've got one of the best academic institutions. We've got a culture where we want our children to most of the times want to only go ahead and do education and higher education. And there's a huge value that is applied to education. In that environment, we've got one pillar of science, technology, and innovation very well covered. The second and the third pillars of education, uh, science, technology, and innovation is actually research and then applying that research onto a business environment. And that's where academia, business, and the government play a very big role. And I think to your question, it's not one or the other. It's not going to be government has to do all these things and then only this will have this science technology innovation uh, will go up from it what it is stagnant now at about 0.6 or 0.7% of GDP over the past two decades. And in the recent budget, for example, the National Research Foundation gave an outlay of 50,000 crores has been announced. I think that's a huge brilliant step in the right direction. The government will announce there are roles for each one of us to do. The government will announce uh, budgets. The government can announce policies on tax implications that can enable this. And the reason it requires that in the beginning is that it, like anything else that starts from scratch, it requires a little bit of push before it takes momentum. A very important part of physics in that is all we know that it requires that momentum to start moving on. And that momentum has to be provided by the government, but the industry and the academia can't shirk away from their responsibility. We in the industry have to demonstrate, therefore, that what are we doing with it? And the reason why I say the first comes before the second in terms of spend and allocation, because it will start to bring it an impetus. It will start to show some positive examples. For example, look at the work done in the animation industry, for example, in AR, VR, visual computing, and MI. Look at the work that being done across the board in different deep tech companies. Uh, as you know, being part of NASCOM, we have a deep tech club. In FIKI, we are trying to propagate the science, technology, and innovation mantra across the board. So the three real you know, pillars are government, business, and academia. And only countries that have been able to manage and you know, collect this all together has been successful. I mean, I think on a philosophical note, I see a quantum jump in innovation in India when academia understands the business behind technology and industry appreciates the technology behind the business. Thank you uh, for that uh, saying. And you know, if you were to look at uh, the, you know, you mentioned while you were chatting about the uh, National uh, Research uh, Foundation and the outlay of you know fifty thousand crores. Uh, if uh, in your in your in your thought process, uh, what could be the one or two things that this could do to actually kickstart? I'm just ch changing it, you know your words a bit, but kickstart or you know or accelerate or deepen, right? Uh, this uh, whole engagement between academia and uh, industry. Uh, you know, you mentioned that you're looking at some policies, you're looking at some tax breaks, et cetera, et cetera. But what could be done in the, you know, in the next, let's say, one year uh, to enable this to happen? I think uh, quite a few things, Dilip. Um, there is the, the startup ecosystem as an anchor is crucial link in the innovation supply chain. I think Supporting that startup ecosystem through our own FIKI's startup initiative, tremendous value adds as part. Everyone, NASCOM's got the 10,000 startups uh, initiative. Um, and there are many such organizations, I'm sure there are many other organizations that are trying to do it. How do we make sure that we are actually bringing this under? We have a uh, science and technology ministry. And if we can probably put this under so that these initiatives are actually driven in a slightly more structured manner. So for example, what do I mean by that? The initiatives on what are the key areas that the government needs to probably or the country needs to probably make sure that they need a 
the science and technology and innovation to drive growth. Maybe manufacturing, which where a huge amount of science and technology and innovation will make our businesses more competitive. So we need to make sure there's a cluster around which this is driving manufacturing in that process. Agri-tech, are, are, are we have the largest employment in agri. And if you apply agri-tech along with it, there's a great opportunity to make sure that we are seriously productive and globally competitive. And today coming from an IT services business, this could easily be the next biggest export uh, you know, opportunity for India. So can we focus on that? Then there are other areas that we could probably look at which are coming across, which will enable us. For example, space tech. That's absolutely the other third area that we are looking at. Now, if you look at these, another area that's coming up is health and work that has happened in pharma and life sciences in this country is tremendous. Media and entertainment that has happened in this country at this population and the opportunity and the creativity that we have been able to demonstrate is tremendous. I'm looking at it not just technology and innovation being enabled for India, but also from India to the world. So for us, the opportunity lies across all those select, and I came up with these five sectors because I felt it is, but I'm sure the government bodies, whether it's Ministry of, you know, the PSA's office, or it is Niti Ayo coming together, can combine these clusters and we can use the funding to drive that into this manufacturing or agri-tech or whatever else and let companies participate in this based on their solutions and ideas that they can come together and it can only be done through a collaboration mechanism run by the these organizations which enable this too so the government as an enabler not as a not as someone who's trying to do this because you have to leave it to the business to do it and academia will need to see that if they are part of the funding then they and the government how jointly they are creating um, you know, uh, IP, products, solutions, and innovation in science and technology. That's how we'll probably be able to use this fund more effectively. So thank you uh, for that, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, background of your initial ideas of how we could uh, do it. Um, I would now like to actually turn and just, you know, flip it on its head and say, okay, uh, given even given the constraints that were there in the previous uh, regime, and you know we are waiting for the foundation to uh, <laughs> uh, to come up, um, but uh, there have been uh, some very nice models and effective models of cooperation between private sector and research uh, labs. So, what are some of the examples? Uh, you know, just to say that you know, if I were to take Mahindra as an organization, although you're tech uh, Mahindra. Even in 2008, eight nine, uh, we collaborated with the Indian Institute of Petroleum, the Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers, and uh, uh, the Gas Authority of India Limited to take the CNG vehicles, which are on the road, and start injecting different percentages of hydrogen, and to see what uh, mix of hydrogen and CNG uh, would be, uh, you know, uh, useful without changing either the dispensing stations or or the uh, vehicle, that's just an example of what happened. And now that was 2008, nine uh, and 10, and they've actually started uh, the trials in Delhi now. But I'm just saying, what are some of the models uh, that are interesting? I know that uh, Mahindra Group is also doing something, but what, um, you know, and how do we uh, then enhance uh, commercialization of IP being uh, generated in the public funded R&D labs? The two separate questions. First, let's look at the, uh, the successful models and what we could do, uh, even irrespective of the National Research Foundation coming up. And then we'll go to the IP question. There, uh, I think the industry bodies here play a very important role because you bring together with what work that you do in FICI or what work we do in people do in CII or what work we do in NASCOM have a very interesting role to play in terms of being people together and making sure that these initiatives are talking to each other and we are not duplicating or not in counter purpose to the others. So for example, the FIKI has this great initiative called the FIKI for Startups Initiative. We've been involved in it and it is fantastic initiative. It's also got you know, a connect to the global investor community and the policy advocacy with the government. Now, today um, our investor community has still a lot more to do to get excited about coming and pre presenting. So there is work to be done in terms of policy advocacy. So we have startups not going out of the country, but actually being in the country so that it becomes an environment to do business. 
across our IPR laws, across our funding, across our tax breaks, our ability to be able to drive this. I think sometimes we break, make the mistake of trying to, you know, um, apply the same formula to all and not look at it saying that first, let's build the road, the highway, which allows this growth of innovation, growth of technology and science to happen. And on the basis of that, we will then start to make sure that it starts to provide back to the community or back to the country or to the government, rather than trying to do it from the very beginning. So we need to make sure those highways start to be busy. Those technology and innovations are in numbers in millions. Imagine the possibility that can be done. NASCOM, for example, has its 10,000 startups. From five unicorns in 2014 to 24 in 2019, to an expected 900 plus in the next five years, is just tremendous, that opportunity for us to create value in this. And as I said, the government can act as an enabler. It is important for government to play the sheet anchor role on R&D. It allows people to come and talk about what the policies would be and how to make sure that we are doing things which are aligned with the growth of the uh, growth of the country. That's to me are the various initiatives that actually can enable and can demonstrate the coming together of the business academia and uh, um, you know uh, the government to come together. As far as Mahindra and Tech Mahindra is concerned, I think. Uh, you know, there's tremendous work that we uh, can be done, and there's some that we've we've already initiated. You mentioned about it uh, in the Mahindra group. We have a group, a place called the Mahindra Research Valley (MRV), uh, which has done does work across all of these areas of uh, EV and low gas and gas enabled, uh, um, you know, vehicles and so and so forth. So there is a huge amount of work that's happening in that area, and we are using that to plow that back into those learnings and those into all our products, mostly in terms of automobile and farming and agri and so on and so forth. In Tech Mahindra, um, we are doing a lot of work primarily around the work that we do with academic institutions. We have our own Mahindra University, which uh, you would be aware that, uh, uh, you know, apart from having an engineering college, what Joss got, got launched as an university last year. And it's proud, it's a hugely pride area for us because we've got some of the brightest brains from around the world coming and working with us in terms of our academy and research work. On other academic initiatives, we do a lot of work, not just with the IITs or the NITs and the ISCs of the world, but we have decided focus areas and we've got a lab in every place called a maker's lab, which is basically a research and innovation lab that brings together again local innovation, academia, and even bringing together the business problems together to solve this. And by definition, we've called it the maker's lab. And I think areas like quantum, we are working with Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. We are working with IIT Madras on Agritech, and so and so forth. So I think there is definitely a lot of impetus in the organization because we can see that when we compete in the outside world, the only way to succeed is when we start to pull in more and more technology and innovation into our business rather than where we are only delivering to what is being asked for. So there's a lot to be done. What I just mentioned is really scratching the surface, Dilip. So though I think there is a push and culture, there is a lot more that we can do. Uh, thank you for that and you know uh, sharing what Tech Mahindra and how you're actually uh, collaborating. But just one quick uh, follow-up question on that. While a lot of this is, I think, initiative taken by Tech Mahindra and by companies, other companies, what uh, is there any specific uh, policy or guidelines that could actually be put in place to accelerate this and broad base this uh, uh, thing, uh, you know, across industry, across academic uh, institutions? Uh, or you believe that the National Research Foundation will actually enable it to happen there? You know, you mentioned. While you were speaking, you got some great international professors and you know others coming and addressing the Mahindra University. Um, that doesn't seem to be happening uh, on a very large scale with people in uh, India. You know, uh, you are very select uh, professors, etc. Because they, a lot of their belief is that there's no uh, ecosystem or no incentive in place or no policy to promote that. No, Dilip, you make a very good point. I mean, if you look at the success that some of the US universities have demonstrated, and I have no qualms in sort of suggesting that we copy from the best, 
and i think there is no harm in or lacker get let rather let me use a different word get inspired from the best and i think um, there is a great opportunity for us to get inspired with what some of the top universities in the us and some of the top universities in places like singapore etc have achieved and there there is a clear directive and preference and incentive given for academia to be able to do these discussions uh, and industry problem solving where it can go the tenure the professors get a extra funding on top of it when they do the research and they also get a huge amount of opportunity to be able to participate in actual business problems which has multiple benefits one it has a benefit of doing research and driving that business across so that you are creating the brains this some of the finest brains that are there in the students to work with us but you also have an opportunity to drive a better commerce activity you are creating economic activity and impetus for people to create wealth within the organization some of the startups that get created and so and so forth can be tremendous so our opportunity for us to be able to succeed in this marketplace i think has to be about a policy that enables these academic institutions and business to collaborate what will as i said in the beginning it might be important for us to force a little bit of collaboration through policy through incentives and so and so forth i think that's a critical one we haven't leveraged that and that's the reason why we 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 have great academic institutions we have great businesses but not necessarily great technology and great solutions and products i think uh, it's reflected in the backdrop that you had uh, behind you connected world and connected experiences we need to actually uh, look at that in this uh, thing and i think as uh, you know you're leading the fiki science and technology committee you are actually trying to do uh, something in this under the banner science meets industry uh could you like to share with members what is the objective behind this and what do you wish to achieve and how they could actually benefit from this and why they should be looking out for these uh, series then we are trying to i mean um, i don't know whether you you are aware but in the prime minister came to uh, one of our uh, flagship events in ntlf uh, and and he talked about how the tech industry will have to give solutions to the country which are accessible to the largest population of the country um and i think um the outcomes of these are critical in fiki for example we are actually following a similar model the science meets industry will bring together our idea is to bring together experts from both government scientific institutions and the industry in coming together and demonstrate two key things the experts will deliberate on how the power of innovation is using some of the top academics and industry leaders in india and the world and these are the best people who would want to kick start and growth productization against a disruption cycle so it will enable them to create that cycle and then with the second idea is to build with a purpose let the innovators innovate let the businessmen do business but the idea is once again to ensure that academia understands the business behind technology and industry appreciate the technology behind the business we seem to be still in a in certain ways running two parallel tracks it's time to sort of bring them together and that's the objective of this the science meets industry one that we don't treat industry doesn't treat science as saying that you know it's someone else's job let them do it but you know what impact does it have in business and science treats it as if saying you know these guys are too short term oriented quarter on quarter goals and they don't see the value of what research comes together our objective through this is to share case studies bring experts together and raise the awareness of how when science and industry combine it can create magic thank you uh, uh, wish for sharing that you know and also you kept uh, you know you referred to the startup committee we actually have 11000 startups now registered with uh, uh, with the fiki uh, there and i'm sure uh, we also have a parallel track which is startup meets industry and hopefully every alternate saturdays we'll actually have this uh, interaction uh, going forward so this morning i mean you know you actually shared with us uh, today uh, you know your view on the current challenges in the science and technology uh, framework uh, how the national uh, foundation is going to actually enable uh, the dramatic change in the scientific uh, uh, ecosystem why we should not uh, hesitate to learn from the best and put a system into india that it could be a huge uh, export opportunity for india uh, going forward 
thank you for especially for sharing your uh, tech mahindra story and the other success stories uh, that under the mahindra group and about the mahindra university and how corporates and members and then fiki uh, could actually replicate this and actually contribute to the scientific temper in the uh, country and uh, thank you especially for uh, sharing with uh, all members the science meets industry uh, initiative and we hope that members join for this and we actually make india into one the center uh, for r and d in the world you know we we have talked about the pharmacy of the world we have talked about the back office of the world i think we should become the one of the technology science and technology innovation centers of the world uh, going forward thank you once again for being with us